so hello so this is my journal I started on this May of this year so I'm sharing with you my first pages and I'll do a little bit of voiceover description so I drew this after I took uh, my dog Darna for a walk and I realized that during that walk there are some lessons there so um, lessons from living and walking with a dog be reliable enjoy every walk watch what you step on and not everyone on the road means you harm same thing not everyone on the road wishes you well as well and people who stare at you are usually threatened by you or are curious and there will always be shit and be ready to clean it up so I had a new uh, set of paints of the Kuretake brand and I just tried out uh, working with complementary pairs of yellow and purple to show a little flat box and this is Darna's portraits I noted there which uh, which paints I used so every day I just draw as much as I can I try to do a drawing every day and this was when I was trying to understand um, 3D modeling. Translating contours into perpendicular axes. This is a study for watercolor painting. Experimenting with art graph, which is a soluble graphite, and rune, and then also watercolors. More watercolor mess. This was during the graduation. So for a time I was obsessed with this image, so I uh, rendered it several ways in trying to understand the hand and uh, the head. So this was a sea sponge drawn from life, drawn from observation. And when I posted it online, I noticed that people see different things. So some see it as a sleepy T-Rex, some see it as a dog's head. And uh, I think it's a manifestation of pareidolia, which is you see images in, or you project images from ambiguous shapes or forms. They could be clouds or shadows on the wall. And this was from a photo of Audrey Hepburn from Pinterest. I used a dagger brush and paint spray. This is a dagger brush, so-called so because it looks like a dagger or a sword. And actually there is that uh, label that says dagger. This is one of my favorite brushes because it could do so many things. This one was, I was at the Memorial Park and I was drawn to some trees. I was there for about half hour waiting for my sister while we visited the the tomb mark not no, the grave marker of my oldest sister and here I noticed that um, some trees look like running ostriches <laughs> ostrich butts and uh, I realized that silhouettes actually look more interesting 
rather than uh, renderings that had more detail. Well, th that one's, that's just my conclusion, that's me. So uh, here I just put annotations of what the drawing was about. These are thumbnail, thumbnail sketches. These are um, sketches from a morning when I was watching Netflix and then I would freeze a character in the middle of a, of a scene and then do a quick drawing or do a quick painting. This was my cat sleeping and I used soluble graphite. This is already June 21. So some more drawings from that day. A lot of these are reflections of what I had been going through on that day. And usually, uh, because I would spend the day alone with my dog, I ended up always having like a, f or more, more often than not, having a figure with a dog. And this was um, a, quote, a quote from Bill Mayer from one of his posts that democracy dies in dumbness. And here I was just playing with a new watercolor set that had a limited palette or all earth colors. So while I was playing with it, I, the resulting image was like a um, foggy cityscape or an urban scape. So tall buildings and then also some shanties there. This was, I was trying to see if I could produce uh, a tail. Forgive my inky fingers, I was doing some ink drawings earlier. Okay, more experimentations using that particular medium. Looks like a waterfall, doesn't it? And this is more abstract. So this, this was done and the preceding pages. I used this one. They look like chocolate, don't they? But these are actually paints. Uh, this is a, another watercolor set. And then, since I love drawing dogs and cats, so I just keep messing with them. So it's really more like, I, I just wanna be able to engage my hands and my eyes in one activity and what's helpful is that I live in the moment I live in the present moment and it's also uh, a channel with which um, I can access parts of me that are more joyful more innocent and parts of me that are purer Oh, this one is I was um, considering how to proceed with um, a children's illustration project. So here, just messing around with more watercolor. I noticed that I had more confidence, but I still had a bit of caution. So studying faces and then for this my insight was like chiseling marble things we did not know existed and they are hidden until strokes or actions were made I used the uh, I used this one for this what I love about this brush is that you can make flat marks and also detailed marks when this becomes um, 
pointed when it's wet. Let me just wet this a bit so I can show you. So there. Hmm. I'll see if I can make a quick demo. So this is a flat stroke and then a fine stroke and then you just vary your intensity or you va vary your pressure there. Let me just quickly uh, rinse that so that uh, the paint does not dry on the brush. We have to uh, take care of our materials, we have to take care of our tools so that they are with us for a long time. They are among our best friends. So this was a, a ball pen. Uh, quick five minute portrait while I was having dinner with my friend. More watercolor. More watercolor. This is Audrey Hepburn from Breakfast at Tiffany's. This is automatic drawing. Wherein you uh, you just play with with strokes and forms. More automatic drawing. Uh, so you just draw without, without thinking about it. You can consider it as doodling. And you just watch what unfolds on the paper. No serious objective. It's really more like focused play or concentrated play. Now looking back, I noticed that I have a tendency to repeat some strokes. So these seem to be my favorite strokes. Hatches like that. That repeat are parallel next to each other. See? So it's like a safe space. I, I like, it's like I retreat to a safe place or a safe space when I resort to my safe strokes like this. Okay, let's move on. Then I integrated color. So if you notice those here, you've noticed the hatches still coming out. And I think that's part of my style already, hatches. Uh, in a previous page, the words letras y figuras came out because one of the things that I was considering was using uh, figures and, and to show letters. So this is A for aso. <laughs> and, uh, and here is a dog, a capital A. My note here is that it looks like a bit like Dr. Seuss. A for aso. Because I'm also working on a short story about a dog. Of course. We do things that we like to do. And if we could make a career out of it, why not? My insight then was just when I was beginning to be bored, the medium reveals more secrets. And the gift of watercolor for me on that day was this um, composition using the different strokes the different uh, paint consistencies and the different drying times. So each day I look back at what moments when I felt that God was speaking to me and it just happened that I was watching American Gods. There is a connection there somewhere still. And the quote that I lifted is, uh, Belief is only a product of the company we keep and how easily we scare. So the question for me was, for that day, what do I believe in? Whose company do I keep? And what scares me? Because usually what scares us gives us um, a hint or a clue as to what we hold dear or what is important for us. Also on that same day, I was uh, thinking about artistic integrity. 
And my realization was that it requires or it demands us to show also what we consume and not just what we produce. That's why journals like this are important because I use this to record what I consume, what I see, and then what I record. And it also documents how I process what I consume. So I had not inked these because when when inking something, the uh, the spontaneity of the strokes, um, they're kind of lessened. So th these are my uh, studies for this dog character. This is the dog sniffing. This is the dog pooping. This is the dog in that pose that we call the play bow. So when a dog does that, it's actually an invitation to play. They like to play with you when they do that. So still on the dog. And this is my experiment here. What if my idol for illustration, Quentin Blake, illustrated with graphite. And his style is really more expressive and minimal lines. Um, but what what if he produced works that used graphite or pencil? So this looks more like a bit like a, a Quentin Blake quick sketch, actually. Yeah, this one is also a bit like Quentin Blake, my idol. Yes, I was just playing with uh, with a sepia um, drawing stick. So here I was uh, considering using classic films as a focus because of these points. Classic films are loved by generations. They represent a particular milieu or an environment or a setting. They are contextual, they are archival, they record or document a certain point in history. Um, they show what was significant to that culture. And the, photograph, the photographs or the stills from the film are all planned and designed. They are well composed. They are not snapshots that are more spontaneous. An experiment with uh, with two colors, sepia and russet. And I just listed some uh, traditional Filipino art forms, uh, repose or um, metal pounding or metal stamping, letters y figuras, banderitas, and shadow play. So still here, A for Aso. More watercolor mess. I used ink. More watercolor mess. Still on Quent what if Quentin Blake used uh, graphite? And the end result was that it looked kind of dusty, so I just put dust there, which seems to be an interesting story. Or it seems to be an interesting title for a story, or it can be the name of a character. So dust could be the dog, or dust could be the cat. Living in the streets. And I hope to make a um, heartwarming story about that. Okay. Kamut ulo moment. I was confused about um, perspective. So I decided to practice a bit more. Two point perspective, three point perspective. Uh, one is you're looking up, and then the other one is you're looking down. More watercolor mess. Uh, another one of my objectives is 
to have precise lines when working with watercolor or precise brush strokes. This is a cat. You could recognize this as a cat, right? And then um, some conceptual landscapes. And then this is a messy mind map-ish of some directions that I'm considering. What about the other stuff? There are so many stuff that I want to learn. And this was shortly after my 10th uh, viewing of everything everywhere all at once. And my, uh, my other counterparts will handle the others. No, that's, that sounds crazy. But no, other artists will handle uh, the other subject matter. Or just other subject themes that I'd like to work with. So I'll let them do that. I'll focus on my fun, on my joy. Okay, this is another automatic drawing. Malapit na, malapit na. And then, what did I write here? From random, ran random hatches all over the place until an image forms and then I developed. And then the image that developed was a face. Ah, uh, this is just messy. I used a fountain pen ink here and then I just wet it with a brush and I like the effect. This is a collaboration between me and a co-teacher. She would do some strokes while I color using the a mauve, a mauve brush. Still playing and then uh, playing with watercolor clouds and uh, waves. So there. So we are towards the end. Um, this is while uh, I was attending a Zoom meeting and we're talking about how recent events have disrupted our flow and that uh, the lesson there is we need to be ready for disruption. We need to be ready to respond well and we need to be ready to pivot at the drop of a hat, any hat. Oops. Okay. Ah, sorry about that. It was still wet pala. And some quotes from that um, Zoom meeting. Rest is a moral obligation. If we are not rested, we are short-tempered. <coughs> Excuse me. And the people around us, we will make them miserable. So we are 100% ourselves if we are fully rested. And uh, we can relate that to music which is made from sounds and silences or notes and rests. And um, this is a quotation from Katharine Hepburn, one of the greatest Hollywood actresses from the golden era of Hollywood in the, in the 50s. So she said, fail and flounder and then shine a bit and then do it all over again. Which I think uh, represents what I did in, my, in this journal, my latest journal. Okay, um, if you'd like to see more of what I do, my Instagram is uh, badeles.artstudio. Let me just fix that up. But Delius dot, uh, dot dot art studio, and then my dog Darna is Darna the Rottweiler. She's currently my muse for what I do. There. Thank you.